So the 88M Neve's first two-channel desktop audio interface. That's right, this is Neve's first ever desktop audio interface using technology that comes directly from the 88RS console. Okay, can you give us a quick overview of the 88M's features? Okay, so one of the most important features are the preamps. We're using two transformer balance pre's that come directly from the 88RS console. These are the Mariner transformers, right? Yeah, these are the same transformers we use in the input stage of the 88RS console preamps. Each channel also has an insert point. We have monitoring facilities for connecting loudspeakers. We've got headphone amplifier. We also have ADAT expansion options. And this is all USB 3 bus powered as well. So what was the design ethos then behind the 88M? This is something that our clients have been asking for for many years to create a desktop audio interface that has Neve quality preamps built in. We wanted to do this from the ground up uh, with no corners cut, making sure that this was Neve through and through. It's got the same build quality and same design as all of our high-end consoles have. And this is at home in many premier home studio environments or even as a portable audio interface for recording high quality on the road. And these are the same preamps that I use in the 88RS console, as you mentioned, that are found in Abbey Rose and other leading studios. What makes these so special? The 88RS preamp evolved from decades of console preamp design experience. And one of the things that makes it so special is that it has to sound great on all types of instruments and all microphone types. The 88RS console is used for orchestral scoring and recording pop music for the past two decades. So it has to sound good on everything. So it's really capturing that modern Neve sound. Now the first question I've got about this, it's USB powered. Why have you gone for USB power? The main reason was portability. We wanted this to be able to be placed in any position in the studio, even in the live room, or even taken on the road and positioned next to a laptop right next to the performer. Uh, it's very easy to use and it connects to multiple computer types as well. Now there's a real sense of ruggedness about this unit. There's no essence of cheaper plastic feels that you, you get with some interfaces. It looks like I can pick it up, chuck it in a backpack, get on a plane, get on a train, get anywhere in the world, set it up and just crack on with recording. Yeah, so the outer casing is actually made from the same material we use to build our console armrests. This is really designed to be rugged and portable and to withstand a few knocks over the years. So I'm assuming this is being taken out then on the road, it's being tested thoroughly. Has this been given the seal of approval from our legacy console users? It has, we've got several console users out there who regularly work on the 88RS day in, day out. They were part of our beta test field and they've been using this and given these preamps the seal of approval. Because these console engineers, they still need to travel around and record on location from time to time. Instead of carrying around interfaces, mic pre's, headphone amps, you know, producer friends of mine, you see them carrying around big suitcases full of stuff. You can just carry one simple unit now and take it anywhere you like. Yeah, so if you were to pass out every feature of the 88M into individual units, so two high quality Neve preamps, you've got the ADCs, the DACs, the headphone amp, all of that, it would be quite bulky and also quite expensive. But the 88M packages all of these high quality parts into one easy to use and portable unit. And we all know how difficult it is to get a mixing console through custom nowadays. Now a lot of companies outsource their manufacturing processes abroad in order to keep costs down. Is this made in the UK? Yes, the 88M is 100% made in the UK. It's designed by the same team who work on our 88R consoles. So it uses the same processes made in the same factory and produces the same Neve sound. Why have you gone for the 88RS preamps? Why didn't you go for the 1073s, for example? The 88RS console over the past two decades has proven itself at the top end of the audio industry. Used for orchestral scoring or pop music, it has to sound good on absolutely every instrument type. And it's a modern sounding preamp. So we wanted to package a modern Neve Pre into this modern audio interface. We're using class AB circuitry here, which is much more efficient than the old transistor-based class A circuits in the 1073. And this allows us to take advantage of bus power, making this a very portable unit. Are these really the exact same preamps then as the 88RS console? We designed this from the ground up and we really wanted to tie it in with the 88RS console. So it's not just 
the, uh, the transformer, the same transformer that we're using, it's the same circuitry behind that as well. So it's the same single gain stage via the AD797 op amp. It's the same circuit design and importantly, the same designers who build the 88RS console. Their know-how went into designing this as well. You just mentioned the AD797. That's for the preamp gain staging, right? So on the input, we have the transformer balancing that input. Then we have the AD797, which is the premium op amp that's used in the 88RS console preamp. This, in one single stage, provides the rest of the gain for the preamp circuit itself. And the AD797 itself provides a great bandwidth across the entire range, so more of an open sounding preamp. So inside this super portable high-end preamp interface, there's two actual Mariner transformers as well. Inside here are the exact transformers used in the 88RS console preamp. It's the 10015 specification, Mariner spec, and that was an evolution of the 1073 mic transformer used in some of the early new broadcast consoles uh, through to the V series, then through to the 88RS, and now packaged inside the 88M. So everything that we've mentioned now, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions about this. The preamps, the transformers, surely there's gonna be some compromise to quality with this? We're using USB 3 power, not USB 2, which has more than enough current to drive these modern efficient preamps. So they do produce the same sound, the same tonal quality as the 88RS preamps, but you do have a slight reduction in headroom from plus 26 to plus 18, which is more than enough for any modern application. Talk us through connecting the input selection. So we have the microphone input selected at the top. This is indicated with the red LED, and this activates the XLR part of the combi input at the front. We have 1.5 kilo ohm impedance, and we have a gain range of plus 21 to plus 68 dB, um, with, of course, the headroom of 18. So quite a wide gain range there for a variety of different microphones. And it's also got line input as well, right? It has. So the pot itself selects my input. If I push this pot here, I've now selected the line input on the front of the unit. This switches over to the TRS part of the combi input at the front, and we have 20 kilo ohm impedance now. So we have minus 12 to plus 35 dB of line gain, and this is ideal for synthesizers or drum machines to connect up to the 88M. And what's so special or unique about this line amp? So one of the unique things about this line amp is that we're actually feeding that line amplifier through the transformer, which is a little bit different to the 88RS console design, but we wanted to include that here so that you get a bit of that Neve color for any input. And then the final section of this is the DI. Does that have TRS as well? The last input is the DI, which is the yellow LED. And this again is looking at the TRS side of the combi input and the impedance changes up to 900 kilo ohms. That's perfect for guitar and bass DI then, isn't it? What other features are included? So just like the line amp, the DI is also fed through the transformer. So this is ideal to add a bit of color to any instrument you're working with, like a guitar or a bass, for example. So that really is then the color through all of the inputs. You've also got the plus 48 volts phantom power, and there's a signal LED as well. Yeah, so we have a tricolor LED for signal presence and clipping for each of the preamp channels. The clip indication is actually tuned to 3 dB below 0 dB FS. Just giving you a little bit of warning then before you start hitting the, uh, the analog to digital converters. And you've gone for balanced inserts as well. Yeah, so each of these preamp channels has a balanced insert circuit, which has a send and a return path. So this is great for combining professional analog gear balanced at 4 dBU. That's a really cool feature because you can just link up any outboard gear. Then I can use my 2254 compressor, for example. Yes, this insert circuit allows you to combine your favorite outboard gear with the 88M Pre's before it goes into your DAW, allowing you to track with all your gear. You could also use this for effects loops, for guitar effects pedals, for example. And the insert send is always active, so there are a lot of other uses for that too. So if that insert send is always active, that means I can use that as a standalone preamp, right? Yeah, that can either be used to split the signal, sending an analog output to something else, as well as the USB output. And also it can be used as the standalone line output for each of these preamps. And I guess to do that, I could just use a USB power hub, for example, to use that as the 88M PSU. Exactly, yeah. So you can use it standalone in just that way. The insert returns are also a great way to have a clean input into the ADCs. It bypasses the preamp, just going straight to the analog to digital converter. So if you have external gear like a 1073N 
or a line level synth and you just want to convert that analog signal to digital, you can use the insert return for that feature. Neve is really known more for its analog circuitry, its sound, its vibe, more so than the digital conversion, at least in the music studio world. Can we delve into that a little bit more? So the Neve R&D team comprise of analog circuit designers and experts in the digital domain. So AD, DA conversion is something that we specialize in. For the past 20 years, we've been producing the DFC 3D console, which is used at the world's top dubbing stages to produce soundtracks for films. We also have products such as the 1073 DPD and consoles like the Genesis, which use industry leading AD DA converters that are often praised for their clarity and sound quality. So let's talk about these ADCs or analog to digital converters. Now we know the preamps are always top of the range, top spec. Let's talk about the chips and the ADCs. The 8AM uses ESS Sabre 32 chips on the ADCs. And these aren't commonly used on a lot of audio interfaces. They're very high specification and high performance. And what about the DAC, the digital to analog conversion chips? So we're also using the ESS DAC chips as well as the ADCs. So the Sabre 32 ES9018 DAC chip, which has built-in jitter elimination, top of the range audio spec, 120 dB of dynamic range, very low distortion and low end extension. So using top of the range chips in this for the conversion, I can even use this on the road when I'm mastering, traveling from place to place, for example. Yeah, exactly. So by knowing you've got these high quality components in there, you can trust your ears when you're on the road. You don't need to worry that any piece of equipment is limiting what you're hearing, essentially. And now on the back, we've got the larger USB connector. So again, sticking with this out and about traveling, idea. It looks like it's not going to come out, you know, with ease. Yeah, so we opted for the larger USB-B type connector for USB 3. This provides a really solid, rugged connection, so it can withstand a few knocks. If that was USB-C, it's likely to get damaged when using this on the road. We also provide two cables with the unit. So we have a USB-B to C type and a USB-B to A type. So you can plug this into any computer when you're out on the road. And of course, it's class compliant. So we're good to go really for Windows, PC, any other software that I need to get, any drivers? So there's no software app that will get in the way of your creativity with the 8 m If you're a Mac user, you plug this into your computer, it will appear as a core audio device right away and be ready to use. For Windows users, there's an ASIO driver provided on our website that runs in the background, and you can even plug this into an iPad. So I can connect that to an iPad? Yeah, you can. So from the iPad into a premium high-end DAC, with preamps, with transformers, everything. Super impressive. Now, on the back, I've noticed as well, you've got ADATs. Yeah, so we have two connections for ADAT expansion. We have ADAT input and ADAT output. So that's eight extra ins and eight extra outs. So you can effectively expand the recording capability or the monitoring capability of the ATM very easily via those connections. So with something like the 1073 OPX, for example, you would have eight extra pre's coming into the 8 m and an extra monitor feed for performers, for example. That's going to be amazing, especially for, for drummers, for example. If you're going to need more than the two pre's, you can simply hook it up, have more available. You've got your audio interface, you've got your headphone amp, and you can just capture wherever you are in a studio or in your rehearsal place. You need a loop for an artist's you can get it done there. Yeah, exactly. It's an ideal way to expand the recording capability of the 8 m All right, so let's talk about connecting this up to my studio monitors. How would we go about doing that? We have two outputs at the back, which are TRS balance connections. They are designed to connect up to your studio loudspeakers, and those are fed from the red monitor pot on the front. That looks familiar. It looks like the same monitor controller from the 88 RS console, right? It, it does, yes, yeah, yeah. And we also have that on the, uh, the 8424 console as well. So it's a, it's a console pot. It's actually quite unique because this has a center detent, which is quite different from a lot of attenuators on audio interfaces. So what would I use that detent for? So this detent provides a point where you can calibrate your loudspeakers to an optimal listening level. On a console, you would have a point on the attenuator which would be set to calibrate to 85 dB SPL. So you can do that in your studio if you want to go that far with the calibration, or you can just attenuate your loudspeakers to give you the optimal listening level. You then have the ability to turn this down, right down to minus infinity, and you also have plus 12 dB above that point for really boosting the level if you need to. 
And we've also got the headphone amp controller as well on the front. Yeah, so we have a separate headphone amp on the 88M. This has independent level control. It follows the same source as the monitoring, but it does have separate level control. This also has a detent, which is 6 dB below the maximum output level. So again, a good place where you can calibrate your optimal listening level on headphones. So there's no fear of putting your headphones back on, forgetting where you are and having them blast your ears out. Um, you've also got the LEDs on the front. Yeah, so these LEDs on the front here near the monitor section indicate the latency-free monitoring options that we have on the unit. We have four options, three stereo, one mono. The first one is DIR, which is the direct signal from the preamps. So this is preamp one, panned hard left, preamp two, panned hard right. So if you're in a stereo miking situation with an acoustic guitar or a piano, that's the ideal setting just for listening to your inputs. We then toggle through to mix, which includes a stereo feed from the DAW. So stereo mic'd guitar, stereo mic'd piano, along with the stereo feed of the DAW. The third one is just the DAW. So that's just listening to the DAX, anything you've got playing from the computer, whether that's uh, any videos or anything from the computer system or just DAW playback. And then the fourth option is the mono mix. And what that does is it sums each of the preamp channels into a mono signal straight down the middle, blended over the top of the stereo DAW signal. So that's ideal for a vocalist or a guitar player to have their mono instrument played back, ideally latency free over the playback track from the DAW. So there's no software that I need to worry about. It literally is plug and play, high quality preamps, the Mariner transformers, top of the range ADC and DAC chips all packaged in this little tiny box. So this has everything you need to record professionally. You've got the analog side, the digital side, no expense spurred, zero compromise at home or on the road.